Whenever Jesus speaks to you concerning your life and wants you to correct certain things in your life, rejoice because you know that your Lord cares for you. Amen. Whenever your neighbor speaks to you about, about something in your life, rejoice because you've got a friend that cares. Hallelujah. Amen. The smooth talking words, the smooth words of an enemy lead you into deception. But sometimes the wounds of a friend save your soul. Give God a hand. Sometimes the, wound of a friend, the wounds of a friend save your soul. In Jesus' name. What do you prefer? Ask the guy next to you. Where you want to end with your life? What do you prefer? What kind of friend do you prefer around you? The one who smooth talk and say to you, Ah, wah, 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 you're okay. Oh, you're a nice guy. Wah, wah, wah. Huh? The smooth talk of an enemy lead you into deception and lead you astray. Sometimes the wound of a friend save your soul. Give Jesus a hand. If you are ready to listen to such a friend, you will go far away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pray, pray with me, Lord Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit guide me. Teach me your ways. In Jesus' name. Forgive me my trespasses. My weaknesses and my shortcomings. Do not hold them against me. Do not judge me according to my mistakes and my sins and my weaknesses. But according to your loving kindness and your grace in Jesus' name. Lord God, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one and all his evil trick. All his evil trickery, snares and traps, set me free, open my eyes that I can see in Jesus' name. Deliver me, Lord, from all the devil's schemes and trickery in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Give me tonight awesome bread on which I can feed. Feed my soul, feed my spirit the treasures of your word, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Establish your holy kingdom here in my heart, as it is in, in, in the throne room. Establish your kingdom also in my heart, in Jesus' name. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, in the awesome name of Jesus. We worship you. Give God an awesome hand. Hallelujah. It's Friday night, you are here, and I'm glad to see you, and you are glad to see your neighbor. Bless your neighbor, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Give God a hand. Hallelujah. In His great mercy. To begin with, say to God next to you, great mercy is available to you. So the Bible says His mercy is on you every morning. When the two blind men, they heard about Jesus, they said, Jesus, they shouted, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. The Bible says His mercy is on you every morning for those who believe and those who want to trust in the Lord. Amen. Then in the Old Testament, there was a mercy seat in which the people could go. And took hold of mercy. Today in the throne room, there is also a mercy seat. And it's paved a way into the mercy seat. Into the very throne room of God by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Where we can take hold of the mercy that is available. And so the Bible says, so that we might receive mercy in our time of need. Mercy in our time of need. So the Bible says there's the blood of Jesus available in the throne room of the Father. So that, and we should go there with confidence. Say to God, he said, you need confidence. You can only have con confidence if you've got a clear conscience. I mean, a clear conscience. Meaning your conscience is not attacking you or accusing you. Your conscience is that part of you that tells you when you are wrong. That is in your spirit being. It is 
belong to God. The Holy Spirit works through your conscience, speaking to you when you go astray, when you do wrong. When you keep on doing wrong and you ignore his voice, the Bible says your conscience gets seared. An Afrikaans say that your gewete word toegeskroe. Your conscience gets seared because of ongoing sinful behavior. Amen. Set your gun is to understand God's grace. Amen. You should go to the throne room of God with confidence. Set your gun is to you need confidence. Not arrogance, confidence. There's a difference, please. Many people confuse arrogance with confidence. There's a great amount of humility in confidence. But arrogance is another story. And many people confuse the two with one another. They even say to Jesus, who do you think you are? Some people will say to me, who do you think you are? The person who knows what he is, what he's called for, and know what he talk about because he knows that God is speaking through him. He's got a lot of confidence. And some people might confuse that with arrogance. Even in your case, you should make sure that you, when you act, do not confuse an arrogant behavior with a confidence behavior. Confidence comes only from God. Confidence can come from no one but God. Confidence is a spiritual blessing. When you, which you receive, when you know your sins are forgiven, when you know who you are, when you, when you know what God has called you to be, that gives you a lot of confidence. When you know God is backing you and speak on your behalf and fight on your behalf, you've got a great amount of confidence. But don't can confuse that with arrogance. It's a big difference. The person walking in confidence will walk in great boldness, but still walk in humility. The one who walks in arrogance will walk. It will, it will look like he's not scared of anything, but you will see the, the haughtiness in his life. Haughtiness is an attitude. You've got no... Uh, 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 haughtiness is an attitude, attitude that lacks patience with his neighbor. I give you words of wisdom. Haughtiness is an attitude that lacks patience with those around him. That is a sign whether you walk in confidence or arrogance. Confidence, godly confidence, will not contain impatience, not, even, not nothing. Nothing. Impatience is a fruit arrogance. I mean, impatience is a fruit of arrogance. When you are impatient, you do, not, you do not walk in confidence but in arrogance. Don't confuse the two. Hallelujah. An impatient person makes a lot of mistakes. But those who wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. Faith involves patience. The person of faith knows what patience is. Patience is not to stand in a long queue in a bank and it allow people to waste your time. But patience does not gain, get angry when the person suffers. You do not get angry when you suffer. How, do you, how can you suffer? You can suffer uh, when you when there's someone uh, walking in front of you and you cannot get by him, you suffer because your flesh is suffering now. You want to get by. The same in traffic. When you can sit behind the person and you cannot get by him, your patience is getting tested. I mean, your flesh is suffering. When your flesh suffers because of the impatience in your flesh, you, if you do not get angry, you are a far way on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Do not confuse arrogance with confidence. 
I'm very confident in what I say tonight. And I'm very confident when I preach because I know it's not me preaching, it's him preaching. That gives me a, a great amount of confidence. Confidence is carry a large amount of grace and patience. A person that is confident, is very confident, but he still show great mercy towards those who are weak in the faith and slow in the faith. When I am a pastor, I, I do not have patience with you who are still weak in the faith in some areas. I do not walk in confidence, but in arrogance. When I do not have time for certain people in the church because they are too slow to do that, to that I do, I, that's not confidence, that's arrogance. Because Jesus is there meeting everyone on his own level. Those who are slow, those who are fast. Those, those who respond quickly, those who respond slowly. Jesus meet them all on their own level. He's got patience with them all. Give him a hand, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I go with confidence to the throne room to receive mercy in time of need. You need mercy in time of need. There comes times in your life when you know you, there's a needy time, you need mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His mercies are new every morning. It's not sacrifice you desire with mercy. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Say to God next to you, God requires mercy and not sacrifice. You should be merciful towards your neighbor, the slow ones, the fast ones. I mean, the weak in the faith and the strong in the faith, you should have mercy on them all. Then you're walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray, Lord Jesus, grant me grace to come with confidence to your throne room, to receive mercy in my time of need. Amen. Okay, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth. That was mercy in God's heart that gave us new birth. Give Him a hand, please. It was mercy in His heart. He looked unto human beings and look how downtrodden they are and how defeated they are by Satan. Suffering poverty, Living like animals, behaving like animals, he had mercy on the creation that he created to, to be his image and his likeness. And they chose the ancestor, Adam and Eve, chose the ways of the devil. So he had mercy, he looked down on human beings, he had mercy in his heart. So because he had mercy, he said to his son, you go to the earth, you become my son. And you become a human being so that we can have mercy on human beings. And then you shed your blood for them. You never sin and you shed your innocent blood for them so that they might be cleansed. And I can give them new birth. That was mercy in the heart of God. Give him a hand, please. That was mercy in his heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can come with confidence and to, the, to, 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 the, to the mercy seat. That is in the throne room of God and receive mercy in time of need. Hallelujah. Say to God next to you, we all need mercy in time of need. We need the mercy in God's heart. Mercy comes from God's heart. Mercy comes from a heart. Grace comes from the heart of Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. But mercy comes from God's heart. And when we are saved and born again and we say we are children of God, we Show mercy quickly. We have mercy in our hearts towards the suffering and those who are weak and those who are slow. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In His great mercy, say God's heart was moved. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth 
into a living hope. Say a living hope. He gave us new birth into a living hope. Wow, a living hope. When he looked at human beings, you can think for yourself how God created Adam and Eve absolutely holy and blameless and spotless and sinless. He created them like himself. He created them in his image and his likeness. It was the best he ever created. Give God a hand. The best. The angels he did not create like us. When he created Adam and Eve, he created his very best. The angels he created, not in his image and his likeness, he created them very wonderfully and beautifully. He created them to be spirits. But when he created mankind, Adam first, he created him spirit, soul, and body like himself, free. Like himself, with the same emotions that God experienced. Therefore, an angel cannot show you mercy. He cannot. He's a spirit. He's not like God. He's obeying the Lord. He's a spirit. When God tells him to do something, he's doing it. They're absolutely holy. Amen. They're absolutely blameless. Amen. But they also got a choice. Amen. They can also make choices like Satan made choices against God. But they do not experience emotion like you. Therefore, the angels cannot fellowship with God like us. The angels are not created to have the same kind of fellowship that we've got with God. We are created for fellowship. We are created like Him so that we can have fellowship. Now, you can imagine God created Adam and Eve in His image and His likeness, and then they fall for Satan's nonsense, and He looked down on earth, and He see the mess that we are in. He sees some people down there on earth, His creation, the best, His likeness, His image, killing one another, spit on one another, cheat one another. Hate one another. Destroying his creation, which he created so beautiful for us. And he looked down and he said to himself, himself, the one who created us. And God said, let us create man in our image. Satan God needs to build. The Lord your God is one. But he's free. He is one, but he's free, like you. You are one, but you are free. Hallelujah. So he had mercy in his heart. So he sent the word of God to the earth. He became a man. And he never sent, because he never sent, he bought us free by his blood. He went to that cross, paid that terrible price. A horrible, terrible death on a cross. Shed his innocent blood so that that blood might, blood might be available in heaven so that we can receive new birth by the mercy that is in his heart. In the same way God expects of you to have mercy on your neighbor. Mercy comes from the heart of a man. It comes from the heart of God first. And then those who are born again, it comes from the heart of men and women. Amen.